So my name is Chamitra Jalat. I'm a software engineer for Google and I'm a committer for Apache Beam. Today, I'll be talking about multi-language pipelines and uh, how you can use it to improve usability of your software and to reduce uh, development overheads. All right. So let's talk a little bit about Apache Beam. I'm sure you heard this a few times during the Beam Summit, but you know, let's take a few slides, slides to refresh. So Beam offers you a, a unified programming model for batch and streaming pipelines. Uh, you can execute Beam pipelines using multiple runners, for example, Google Cloud Dataflow, Apache Flink, or Apache Spark. Um, currently, Beam offers three major SDKs, Java, Python, and Go. OK, so Beam offers a, a new framework called the Portability Framework. Uh, with the Portability Framework, uh, uh, you know, the workflow of your pipeline would look like something like this. So uh, a, a pipeline author would write a pipeline using one of the Beam SDKs. And that pipeline will be connected to a standard model through uh, what we call the Beam Runner API. Uh, so it'll be converted to a standard definition, which is based on Proros. And that standard, that pipeline then will be submitted to a Beam Runner, right? Beam Runner will use another standard uh, API called the Fun API to connect to an execution environment uh, to execute parts of this pipeline. Now, what what does a beam pipeline consist of? So a beam pipeline is basically a directly cyclic graph of P collections and P transforms. Uh, P collections form nodes of this graph and P transforms from edges this graph, of this graph. A P collection represents a data set that's available somewhere. Could be in some, for example, some distributed storage system. A P transform represents a computation that is performed on uh, one or more P collections, producing again one or more P collections. Uh, usually, usually, it's assumed that all P transforms that require a SDK are executed in the same environment. So, what's uh, a Beam environment? So, environments are, are what Beam use to execute its UDFs. These are things like do funds or combined funds. Environments are chosen by Beam runners, and they are well defined uh, in the Beam Runner API uh, proto definition. Uh, an environment usually consists of a URN that defines the type of the environment, and a payload that defines parameters to uniquely identify the environment. Uh, for example, an uh, environment can be a Docker container that contains the SDK. In this case, the URN would be something like beam colon n colon docker colon v1. Uh, uh, the payload would be a message of type docker payload. In this, it usually contains just one property, which is the container ima image for the docker container. Or uh, uh, an environment just can be an array process that can execute user code. Uh, in this case, uh, the URN would be something like you know beam n process v1 while the payload will be a, a proto of type process payload, which would contain things like the OS, the architecture, the command to execute, and maybe a you know, set of environment variables. All right, so uh, graphically, uh, uh, example, an example beam pipeline would look something like this. So in, in this graph, I, in boxes, I've given P transforms and in cylinders I've given represented P collections, right? So here we start with the create pipeline that you know takes a bunch of data as input. Then we create a P collection of that input. Then we execute a pardo, which generates KVs, and we perform a group by key. And then we combine these results to generate keys, uh, you know, original data and maybe counts. 
and then finally we could verify our result, right? So this is the example pipeline. Now, if you look at different different colors in in this diagram, different colors of boxes, I've given the environment. So the things in red here are actually executed by the runner, so they don't even need a beam uh, execution environment. So these are things like create or group by key. Things in blue uh, is what will be actually actually will be executed in a beam environment. So in this case, we have two do funds and a combine, and uh, this in this case they'll be executed in the Python SDK environment. So what is different in multi-language pipelines? Now with multi-language pipelines, transforms for different environments can be in the same pipeline. And we use the term cross-language transforms to denote transforms that are not in the main uh, SDK where your uh, pipeline is written in. Uh, so why do we need this? Uh, there are many benefits. One thing is that you know, SDKs can share transforms, for example, IO connectors. Like if Java has certain like, IO connectors that other SDKs do not offer, they can be offered to other SDKs. Uh, it do doesn't just have to be IO connectors, you know, any arbitrary transform. For example, if it is available only Java, which is the case for some of the transforms today, they can be offered to other SDKs. Uh, one good example is Beam SQL, which was written in Java originally, but now offered to uh, Python uh, as a cross language transform. Or if you have a Python only transform, that can be made available to other SDKs. An example would be TFX transforms that are written in uh, Python. It's it's generally easier to develop transforms this way because you know you can just develop it in one SDK and offer it to all the SDKs. Also, it's easier to maintain transforms because you know you essentially only have to maintain one stable version instead of maintaining a version per SDK. Now, with multi-language pipelines, so this restriction I mentioned earlier get relaxed. Now, P transforms of the same pipeline may get executed in different SDK environments. The original diagram I've showed you of the pipeline workflow we will also look a little bit different now. So you still have the main Beam SDK, which I have given in red here, that Beam SDK one that submits the pipeline, but that could use transforms written in other SDKs. So it will connect to other SDKs during job submission. Now, everything again will be converted to a standard pipeline definition using the runner API, and it will be submitted to the Beam runner. Beam Runner will again use the standard fun API to execute the pipeline, but now instead of using one environment, it'll have to use multiple environments to completely execute the pipeline. Now, uh, the example pipeline also could look a little bit different. So here, everything else is the same other than this green box. So in green, I mentioned that my KV generator is now actually is implemented in Java, right? So we use two environments here. Just for that Pardu, we use Java. But for other Pardu and the combined, we use Python. Now, um, if you think of the Beam pipeline execution, I think of this as two different phases. So first we have this job preparation phase where we construct the job, job within the Beam SDK. So this is where we do things like expanding our composites, right? So Beam composite transforms are transforms that are written using other transforms. During uh, job submission, these uh, composites usually get expanded to primitive, tra primitive transforms. And the SDK also you know, construct a job graph that's in that particular language during this phase. And then it would create the job proto that, you know, that is the standard definition of the job. 
And then we have the job execution phase that includes everything that happens after submitting the job to the runner. So this is uh, where things like, you know, the runner would usually convert the portable job definition to a runner specific job request. And that request would be submitted to the runner service. And runner usually has some, you know, runner specific job setup to set up for the job. And a runner would usually perform some optimizations to optimize the pipeline. And finally, it'll execute the steps of the pipeline. Now, with multi-language pipelines, most of these steps do not change, but some do. So I have given in bold here the steps that changed. So I mentioned that composite transforms are expanded, right? But with multi-language pipelines, some of these composites might be written in a different language, right? So you had to use a slightly different process to expand such transforms. Job execution phase might have you know, certain things that are different. Uh, now, you convert the portable job definition to a runner specific job request. You might have you know, some changes here when you, have, when you have to consider different environments. The runner specific job setup might be different because now you have to cater for and provision for more than one environment. And execution of steps might be different because you know, you now have different steps that might need different uh, SDK environments. So during execution, the runner had to figure out which steps execute in, in you know, which environment and execute accordingly. Um, so let's dig a little bit deeper into transform expansion. So this usually happens when, you, you know, if you've written beam pipelines, when you, in Java, if you, when you run transform.apply that's where the SDK would expand expand the transform or if you will use Python this happens when you use the pipe operator so what SDK usually does is it, it adds the transform to the SDK specific job graph and it can also build the pipeline proto segment for that particular transform now the keyword here is segment so it doesn't have to build the whole thing at the same time it can build Proto segments and build the full, full definition of the pipeline. Right. Uh, so after you expand all the transforms, pipeline is ready to be submitted to the runner. Now, with multi-language pipelines, since some of these composites might be written in other languages, the local SDK has to use a special service to expand such transforms. We call this an expansion service. This can be accessed through a known URL. And transforms registered in expansion service have unique URLs to uniquely identify them. An expansion service can basically construct and expand uh, composite transform objects. Uh, Beam already has tooling to start already, you know, easily start a local expansion service and use that. Uh, one thing to note here is that if you use multiple remote SDKs, you might need to utilize multiple expansion services. So for example, if you have a Go pipeline that uses a Java transform as well as a Python transform, you will have to set up two expansion services, one for Python and one for Java. Now, the, the protocol of uh, the multi-language expansion looks something like this. So in left, I have the Python environment where you actually you know, write your Python pipeline in. And in the right, I have the uh, Java expansion service to expand, right? So Python, to denote an external transform, would use this uh, special API called the external transform, which takes three parameters. It takes a URN that uniquely identifies the uh, transform that you want to expand. It takes a payload that basically provides the parameters needed to construct the transform object. And finally, the endpoint of the expansion service that you should have already started. And using this, 
uh, the SDK will create an expansion request and we'll send it this to the Java expansion service. And once the Java expansion service receives this, it'll construct a transform object in Java side using the information available in this request. And it'll come uh, call expand on this to expand the transform. And finally, it will get the you know, expanded transform object. Now, once it gets that, it can attach it to expansion response and send it back to Python. This basically contains the Poro segment for that particular transform. And once Python gets this, it can attach that segment to the large, larger Poro definition and construct the, the full uh, pipeline to be executed. And it will submit this to runner. So I think it's good to uh, explain all this with a, a simple example. So we look at a, a Java prefix transform and, and how to use that from a Python pipeline. So this is the Java transform. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you look at the constructor, it takes one parameter called prefix. And if you look at the expand method, it apply a single pardo to every element. And the do fun of that pardo is add prefix do fun. All it does is attach this predefined prefix to every element. So every element will end up having the same prefix after this. Now, to make this available as a cross-language transform for a multi-language pipeline, you have to add few classes in Java side. Basically, you have to th add three small classes. First, you have to add what we call this uh, config object. This is just a simple pojo, Java pojo, uh, which as fields have the uh, things you need to construct the uh, transform object. So in this case, you just need one constructor parameter, which is prefix, right? And you also add a setter for that. That's all. And then you need a builder for this transform. This should be a class that uh, implements the interface external transform builder, which just have one method called build external. And what this, and as a parameter to this, you provide your you know, predefined config object. And in, within this method, you should use the config object to construct a transform object and return that. So you return an instance of type Java prefix, right? And then you have to add a third ca class called a registrar. This is basically to register your transform with the expansion service. Um, you have to implement this interface, external transform registrar for this, again, which has just one simple method called known build instances. This should return a map that maps a unique URN, which is a string, to an instance of your builder that you just defined previously, right? And here I defined this URN for my transform, my beam transform Java prefix. And uh, you can use auto service to uh, easily register this with the expansion service uh, by annotating with it with the auto service tag. And as long as it's in the class path, it'll be picked up by the expansion service and will be registered. Uh, now you have to think a little bit about what depends on, depend Java dependencies you need, right? So these are things Java jar files that you need to expand. Uh, your transform and also to execute your transform. Usually it's easier to create a single shader jar that needs all the you know jar files that you need, but this is not a requirement. You can use, you know, use more than one jar if needed. What you have to do is you have to, when you start up the expansion service, you have to add all the dependencies to the class path. Now, as long as they're in the class path of the expansion service, uh, all Python and Java dependencies uh, uh, will be staged by the runner. In this case, uh, it will be staged for the runner by the Python SDK. Right? So Python will make sure to stage Python dependencies as well as Java dependencies received through the expansion process.
Now you have to also decide what expansion services to use. Now the good thing here is that you pretty much in all cases you don't have to uh, to implement your expansion service. You can use the default Java expansion service that is provided with Beam, and this is available in this car class called expansion service, uh, which has a main method and which takes a single parameter, uh, which is the port uh, of the expansion service. And the address of this service, once you start it, should be provided um, to the Python SDK. Now, this is our Python pipeline. Um, let's go through it a little bit. Um, so we start by creating a Python object, pipeline object, and then we read a text file uh, and create a P collection of strings. And then in the next tab called Java prefix, that is where we actually use the cross language transform written in Java side. Now to use this, use this special uh, Python transform called external transform, which I mentioned earlier, which takes uh, three parameters. The first parameter is the uh, URN of the transform that you want to use. The second parameter is uh, the the uh, the uh, construct construct that you need to a uh, that you need need to uh, you know create the transform. If you remember, we created a config object that was has only one uh, field. So this basically maps to that. You you know create a, a pro that has this one field called prefix. And as the value of this, I have given Java colon. So that's Java colon is the prefix that will be added to every element once you use this transform. Now, if you if you uh, you see here that I use something called implicit schema payload builder. So this is a utility that we provide in Python side to easily define uh, the uh, you know pro that you need to actually uh, embed in the expansion request. So you don't have to manipulate protos, you can just use these payload builders to easily provide the constructor parameters you need for your transform. Uh, the third parameter is the expansion service. So we already started the expansion service at this point, and it's in the local machine, local host, and the port is 12345. And um, then uh, if you look at the like last two steps, to this output, we apply a second Python pipeline called Python uh, step called Python prefix. Now here, what we do is we add a second prefix in Python side. So whatever you know original input, you add a Java colon in Java side. We'll also add a Python colon in Python side. So final output will have Python colon, Java colon, the original data, right? And finally, we write this uh, output to a text file. Cool. So let's try to run this. Uh, now, this code is actually available in GitHub. So if you go to uh, github.com, chamikarmj, multi language dash pipelines, you will find uh, you know, all these classes here, and you can try them yourself. Uh, so it has actually two examples, this one as well as a word count. You can try both. All right. Yeah, so let's try to run this. Uh, so I have some scripts here. I'll show you what I what I have in my scripts. The first script is just to start the expansion service. Now all I do here is that I have you know my Maven module. I go there. I build a jar that has all my clauses, a single jar, and as the main method of the jar, I've given the expansion service class. Right, so I basically get a single jar I can, which I can execute using Java jar command, and as the parameter, I give the port of the expansion service. So let's run that. All right, so there are some conflicts here. You can ignore that for now. 
But if you look at the bottom, you see that expansion service started, and it registered two transforms, Java count and Java prefix. These are the two examples I have in my, my repo. Right? So now the expansion service is already available to be used by Python pipelines. OK. So let's go and execute the pipeline. And first, I will execute this using direct runner. So this is the script. So I go to my Python uh, directory. And you know, usually to execute Python pipelines, you need to be in a virtual environment. So I'm already in a virtual environment here. So that I've already done that part. But you need to set up a virtual environment for Python and install Beam. And then I execute my Python pipeline called add prefix.py. I provide direct runner as a runner. And currently, you had to use Docker as the environment type. <clears throat> and this is my input. Let's look at the input. That's my input, just some you know text. <clears throat> and then finally, I would write the output to this output folder. <clears throat> okay, it's running. I'm using Beam two thirty one zero, which is the latest released version. All right, so it's completed. Uh, you can see things like you know it it downloaded Docker containers here. So you know. Okay, let's go up a little bit. My output is there. OK, so as you can see, uh, you know, here's the original input. Then Java side added Java colon, Python side added Python colon. All right. uh, let's also run the same pipeline using Dataflow. And that is the <coughs> script for that. Uh, you need a little bit more setup for Dataflow. You need to provide things like a GCP project and a GCS bucket. I've already provided those here. Um, and then you know region and some other parameters, the number of workers you need. Um, and this is how you execute the Dataflow pipeline. Uh, the runner in this case would be Dataflow. These are usual parameters you provide to Dataflow. And uh, one thing we no note is that uh, you, know, you need to use Dataflow runner v2 to execute multi-language pipelines. Uh, starting next Beam version, you don't actually have to provide this experiment. Uh, Python will automatically resort to runner v2 if it detect uh, cost language transforms. Um, OK, so let's run that. And again, uh, now input in this case is slightly larger. It's Shakespeare King Lear, which is in GCS. And the output will be stored in uh, GCS as well. Okay. So it's here it's uploading jar files. This is from Python side, it's uploading jar files to uh, to be used by the data for runner. Oh, it's uploading Python stuff. OK, so it's starting the job. It's in pending state now. All right, now it's in running state, right? So if you actually go to this URL, you can see the job. OK, this is our job. It's It's been provisioned by Dataflow. Now, this could take a few minutes because Dataflow is a distributed runner. It has to set up VMs and you know allocate resources. Uh, 
So we'll go back to the presentation and and come back to see see the uh, you know end of this uh, pipeline. All right. So usually when you uh, define a Java cross language transform, it's better to add a, add a Python wrapper in Python side. This is basically a Python class that will wrap the low level external transform API to provide a more user friendly API. You can also do things like, you know, starting up and shutting down the expansion service within that wrapper to hide it from the user. So users don't have to start and shut down expansion services themselves, right? And also, you might probably know the JAWS you need to ex for this transform, right? So you can also include that part in your wrapper. You can exactly say which JAWS you need so that users don't have to deal with JAWS as well. So uh, if you do all this for a pipeline author, an external transform or a cross-language transform could look just like a native Python transform. One side note is that you know, still Java has to be available in the system to start up the expansion service. But other than that, you know, it'll it'll look like a native uh, transform to the Python user. Uh, so I mentioned payload builders uh, easy earlier. Now, these are basically some Python utilities that you can use to easily construct the, uh, uh, the uh, payload of your expansion request. Uh, so this, this is already available in Python SDK. Uh, these basically use beam schemas to perform uh, the type field to mapping, uh, to map from Python side to the Java config object. We provided several uh, payload builders. You can use any one of them. And all of them generate the same proto at the end. So you know there's one based on uh, provided values, which is what I used earlier, implicit schema payload builder. There's also a named tuple-based payload builder, and there's an annotation-based payload builder. So you can use any one of these to you know, construct your, your request. You have to also be a little bit concerned about types you use. Now, since you are you know, uh, you're trying to use a Java transform from Python, for example, Whatever the type you use of the P collection within the boundary has to be a type that is understood by both Java and Python. Right? And these types are represented by Beam's standard coders. This includes things like bytes, uh, you know, strings, KVs, Boolean, var ints, double, iterable, timer, window value, row, et cetera. Now, this last one, row, is very important because this is what you would use to represent an arbitrary object. So it's possible to represent an arbitrary Java object and an arbitrary P collection in the boundary as long as it can be converted to this row type that is understood by all Beam SDKs. Now, if you have a Java transform that produces P collection that is very Java specific that Python would not understand, you might have to slightly update that or wrap it from another composite to uh, Produce a, a transform that can, you know, uh, generate type pro. All right, so let's see if our pipeline completed. Okay, so as you can see, the Dataflow pipeline completed. So this is your read, and this is the Java transform. It read about five K elements, and this is the Python transform, same number of elements, and finally it wrote the output. Uh, we can go and check the output. It's still shutting down. I think you can just kill it at this point. So the output's here.
give us one output file. Okay, that's the output. As you can see, this is the text from Kinglia. We had a Java colon and Python colon. All right. Cool. So again, uh, the code is available here. I'm running from the same repo, so it should work. Uh, you can just check check that out, and you can try this example. And there's a second example uh, called Java count, which basically uh, runs the word count Python pipeline, but uses the count per element transform from Java. And then we have more examples in Beam. Uh, we have example for Kafka, for example, and SQL. Now, what are the benefits of using um, you know, multi-language pipelines or cross-language transforms? Now, uh, this can be used to significantly reduce uh, your cost of development. For example, you can develop your transform once, and offer it to all SDK languages. Now, if, you, if you're in a company, if you have different teams that use different languages, you can use this to share code between these teams. Right? And if you have an, a Java transform, for example, that's already available, there's minimum overhead to convert that to a multi-language transform. As I showed, you just have to add these three simple classes. In fact, we actually have a new proposal that will make this even simpler. Uh, this is still in de development, so I didn't go into detail. But after this, you'll be able to you know, use any arbitrary Java transform from Python side uh, without adding any additional boilerplate in the Java side. And if you're interested, uh, you can follow the Beam div list for updates. And if you can write wrappers to make user experience seamless, like you know, if you add a nice wrapper, the users might not even know that it's a cross-language transform. And also, also, you can use existing libraries and utilities available in Beam to make development easier. For example, you know, things like expansion services that are already available. And we have things like uh, SDK-specific utilities, like payload builders, to make the process easy for you. And uh, also, your maintenance uh, overheads can be uh, significantly reduced with this. Now, you don't have to develop multiple implementations of complex transforms. Uh, there are good examples in Beam, like certain complex transforms. And we would like to actually maintain one version of this in instead of implementing them in you know, each SDK. <laughs> uh, and you know, your development team might change. It might know multiple languages today, but down the line, it might end up with people who only know, you know one language. Now, if you have code written in the other language, you can still continue to use them uh, with pipelines written in, in the language you're familiar with today. Uh, if there are transforms that are already available in other SDKs, you can use this framework to easily use them in, in your favorite SDK. And also, th this can be used to provide a uniform user experience uh, when using multiple SDKs. No, so for example, you know, we have certain transforms in Beam, uh, like are your connectors, where you know, the same thing is available in multiple languages, but the feature set is not the same. Right? Sometimes Java has more features than the Python version of the same thing. But if you use multi-language transforms, the underlying implementation is the same. So the same feature set can be offered to all SDKs. And also, if you think of things like bugs, there are cases where we find a bug in Java side, and, and two years down the line, we find the same bug in Python side. Right? Now, if you have the same core implementation, when you fix it in, in one place, that will be reflected to all SDKs. OK, so this is the status we are in today. Uh, so using Java transforms from Python, this is available today. It's available for Beam uh, portable runners, such as Spark and Flink, as well as Dataflow when you use Dataflow Runner v2. Using Python transforms from Java side, this is also available, but it's still not ready for production use. 
And we are also adding support for Go. This is in development. So with this, you will be able to use Java and uh, Python transforms from uh, Go pipelines. Yeah, so that's pretty much the end of my talk.